Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the Galaga SDL tutorial videos and in this video I wanted to finish up the formation uh, logic because the last video was getting pretty long and I left a few things out that I actually intended to add but it being about an hour and 20 minutes long I wanted to end it there and then make just make another video later on uh, to wrap up the formation uh, the formation stuff so uh, the thing that we need to add in this video is going to be first what we have here is just the enemies when they're coming in and flying into formation so what we're missing is the animations when they go in and also the breathing animations in and out that we talked about in the last video but we never got around to adding that so let's add that first we'll go to our formation.cpp and over here we had the, the section in this if statement for it when all the enemies are still flying in. So what we need to do is, I think we are already locking the level once all the enemies fly in. And yes, we are right here. So in handle enemy formation, when all the enemies finish flying in, we lock the formation. So since this is being done in a level, we can just go to formation.cpp and in the update, add an else statement right after this if. And in here, we can add the, the logic for it to, uh, for them to spread out and come back together. And for this, we what we're going to do is, we already have our spread timer. So we're going to increment that and spread timer plus equals m timer delta time and then if m spread timer is more than or equal to the delay so m spread delay we want to uh, move them apart and then back together so what we're going to do is say m spread counter plus equals the spread direction And then m grid size dot x because they only spread on the x axis. So we can increase the cell size or the grid size on the x, and they're all gonna move apart. So whatever we do to the grid size dot x, because we're already using it in our uh, formation position, as you can see here, formation grid size. So if we change this x, all the positions of the enemies would change at the same time. And that makes it a lot easier for us to uh, change their positions within the formation. So back in formation.cpp, so our grid size.x is going to be equal to, and over here we're going to get the spread direction multiplied by, and then between two brackets here. What we're going to have is a ternary operator. So we're going to do if the spread counter modulus 2 is equal to 0 so every even number for this bread counter if it's equal to 0 we're going to separate them by 1 otherwise we're going to separate them by 2 and that makes them kind of move 1 pixel to the left and then 2 and that gives us some sort of a hop because the original game didn't have them spreading at a, uh, at a constant rate they kind of just hopped across so a small, a small step with the 1, and then a bigger step with the 2. So that will be it for the grid size.x. So all that's left now is to reverse the direction of the spread direction. So we'll say that if the spread counter is equal to 4, or the spread counter is equal to 0, so once it reaches either end, flip the direction. So we'll do m spread counter or m spread direction times equals negative one. And then all the way at the end of, of the if statement, we just need to reset our timer. So we'll say m spread timer equals 0 0.0f. And that should give us the logic for the breathing animation. So let's run it and see what that looks like.
There we go, so let's spawn the enemies and the spread animation should not, or the breathing animation should not start until all the enemies are spawned. So these are all the butterflies, all the wasps are in, and then the bosses come in. Oh, and that does not look right. So what happened here? Let's stop that for a second. And what do we have here? We have our grid size is going to be equal to, right, we're setting the grid size equal to. We need to offset it by that amount. So we need mgridSize.x plus equals, not equal. And let's run it again and see what happens. There we go. So let's spawn everything in. And there we go. Uh, I think the spreading animation is a bit too, yeah, it's a bit too slow, but as you can see, they move in a little bit and then a big jump and then a little jump again. So uh, for our formation, we can go to our, our constructor over here and change the spread delay to something like 0 0.6. And let's run it again and see what that looks like. There we go, so we're spawning all the enemies and then they're gonna go in place. Did I miss one of the enemies? Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Okay, and that, that seems pretty good. So this is gonna be it for the breathing animation. So the final thing that I wanna add in this video is the enemy animation. So the animation sequences for the enemy. So the butterfly should be flapping their wings and the wasp should do the same and the boss should run their animation. So for that, we're going to add one extra function to the formation class. So over here in formation, we're going to add right here in between the lock and grid size, a function called int get tick. And get tick will either be whenever we're in the transition animation, it's going to be the offset counter. And whenever we're in the breathing animation, it's going to be our spread counter. So we can go back to our formation.cpp. And right here, we can say int formation get tick. And this will return. So what we can do is, because we know over here, this is when we're going to be uh, translating, we can say if, if not m locked or m offset counter is not equal to four, return our offset counter. Else, return the spread counter instead. And that will be it for this function. Now we can use this function whenever it's even, we can run one animation and whenever it's odd, we can run a different animation. And that will make our animation run through every tick as the level moves. So since we need our animations now, we can go to the enemy and instead of just having a texture pointer, we can change that into an array. So it's going to be an array of two. So in the enemy.h for texture pointer, we can change that to textures and make it of size two. And in enemy.cpp, there we go. So in enemy.cpp, over here we're setting the texture to null. We can just say textures at zero equals null and textures at one equals null. And then we can say for int i equals zero, i is less than two, i plus plus, delete m enemies or m textures at i and m textures 
at i equals null and that's in our destructor and then over here so we already have our formation so in our render we can say that if the current state or m current state so if m current state is equal to formation state so for in our formation state what we want to do is to just render the textures at and this will, one will be s formation get tick modulus 2 and that will run between the formations and then otherwise so we can say else we can just render m textures at 0 instead so m textures at 0 render so this way when we are in the else we can add uh, a case so that we can have the animation when they're flying in later on but we'll leave that for another video for now we have our formation get tick and that will cycle through the two animations for each enemy within the formation so the last thing that we need to do is to load up these textures so let me open up over here my assets file and in the assets I have the boss the butterfly and the wasp so all I need is the second animation for each one of these and I have those animations here so let's see where I put them there they are so I have boss 2 butterfly 2 and wasp 2 so these are the second animations for each enemy so I will go to boss.cpp instead of texture I will make this one textures at zero and um, then I need to load textures at one so I will copy this and paste it exact same thing by the way to select more than one column at a time is shift alt and then you can select multiple columns at once in Visual Studio it's free it's free handy to know so over here I'll change all these to one and then this one will be boss 2 so now I have my texture 0 and 1 loaded in wasp I'll do the same thing so this one will be textures at 0 and then copy and paste it and change this one to textures at 1 and this one will be wasp 2 and the butterfly.cpp there it is I'll change this one to textures at 0 and then copy and paste it change it to textures at 1 and this one will be butterfly 2.png and that should be it for this so let's run it and see what that looks like So let's spawn all the enemies there we go as you can see it's running through the animations and they're all in sync because they're all using the formations tick so now we can spawn all the enemies in here and then they should run through the animations a bit slower when they are in the breathing animation and there we go that looks pretty good to me and uh, yeah these are all the additions that I wanted to make uh, in this video just so that we can finish up all the animation stuff so that we can start working on uh, On the diving for the enemies and so once we have the diving the butterflies are going to be shooting bullets at the player the wasps are going to be flying in and We'll see what we can do about the boss's capture of the player But for the purpose of this video, this is going to be it. Uh, if you do prefer the shorter videos, please do let me know um, Otherwise I really hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.